Bob Crane was a beloved TV actor from the 1960s and 70s. He's best known for his role on TV sitcom Hogan's Heroes, where he played Colonel Hogan. The role fit him perfectly. I remember he was so funny. Week after week, America watched as he made us laugh. The show lasted for six seasons. After Hogan's Heroes ended in 1971, Crane continued to act. He did guest spots on TV and dinner theater shows. In 1978, Crane was living in Scottsdale. He was performing in a dinner theater show called Beginner's Luck at the Windmill Theater. We're at the former location of the Windmill Theater. This is where Bob Crane gave his last performance. Oh, excuse me, are you talking oh. on this building here? Yep. Um, I used to work here when oh, I was you did? in high school. Oh, okay. Did you have any questions? Yeah, I can uh, so what did you do here? I was in uh, the drama department when I was in high school and okay. I wanted to work here because of the theater but uh, started out as a dishwasher, went to a food mm -hmm. runner and then I uh, was a, was a uh, stagehand. Oh, so okay. we uh, built the sets, worked with the actors, did um, scene changes and all that and there was a stage here that uh, moved in and out so there would be performance out on the floor while they were setting up the stage and then okay. they would run the stage out so there was constant movement going on. Oh okay and so you worked here during the performance that uh, Bob Crane was in? Yeah Bob Crane uh, came in we built the set. For, for Beginner's yeah. Luck? Beginner's Luck, yeah. Okay, okay. We had just finished um, The Unsinkable Molly Brown, okay. which was a very popular play at the time, and um, Bob Crane was coming in, so we built his set, and then uh, I passed him in the hallway as there, there was stairs that went up and then down into the theater, okay. and we passed, I said hello to him, oh. uh, and it's a very nice gentleman and everything, oh, and... Wow. Um, that was when I was just uh, moving on to something else, and okay. anyway, and then two weeks later, they, uh, you know, he had, uh, we lost him two oh, weeks later. Oh, oh, wow. Um, it was just a really fun place to work. Oh, and wow. Some a lot great, of memories. great memories. So you're yeah. doing a very historic uh, location here. Yeah. And so glad that you're capturing it. And yeah, thank you so much for stopping by. Well, I just happened to be coming by and I heard <laughs> you talking about it, so yeah. I just wanted to make sure I, um, you know, added a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so. thanks so much. Anyway, well, good All luck right, to you guys. Thank you. According to my research, on June 28, 1978, after completing his performance here at the Windmill Dinner Theater, Crane made a brief stop at his apartment with his friend, John Carpenter. We're here at the Winfield Place condominium complex. It used to be the Winfield Place Apartments. After a brief stop, Crane and Carpenter headed for a local bar where they had arranged to meet two women for drinks. About 2 a.m., the four of them went to the safari coffee shop that's inside the safari hotel. This is the location where the safari hotel used to be located at 4611 Scottsdale Road. But as you can see, now it's just a vacant lot. After being at the coffee shop for just a short time, Carpenter left. According to witnesses, Crane and Carpenter had had an argument. Next day on June 29th, Crane was a no-show for a prearranged meeting he had with Victoria Berry, his co-star on Beginner's Luck. About 2 p.m., Barry went to his Winfield Place apartment. She knocked on his apartment door, 132A. The door was closed, but it was unlocked. Victoria entered the apartment, and it was dark inside. She went into the bedroom, and she said there was somebody she could tell was laying in the bed. She thought it was a girl with long, dark hair, and then she realized what she was seeing was blood. She said she never got over what she saw that day. Scottsdale police arrived and they found that the apartment was leased to the Windmill Theater. According to the medical examiner, in the early morning hours of June 29th, an unknown person entered Crane's apartment. They struck him twice in the head. The second blow proved to be fatal. During the investigation, Bob Crane's secret sex life was revealed. Apparently, he had a thing for videotaping himself with his many female sex partners. 
approximately 50 pornographic videos were found along with a whole slew of photographic equipment. It was apparently what cost Crane many of his TV and movie gigs. He had appeared in two Disney movies, Super Dad and Gus. It was rumored that producers were afraid of Crane's secret getting out to the media. Because of contract obligations, he wasn't exactly let go, but he wasn't offered any more roles either. Early on, there was a lot of negative reporting going on about how the crime scene was being handled. From what I read, the family showed up at the apartment during the crime scene investigation. They were allowed to go inside and remove items, possibly tainting the crime scene. DNA was in its infancy back then, so it wasn't being considered back then like it is today. I had read that some of the evidence wasn't even tested for years later, and also some of the evidence had been lost by that time. John Carpenter always remained a top suspect in Crane's murder, but it wasn't until some 16 years later that prosecutors felt that they had enough evidence for a conviction. After a two-month trial, John Carpenter was acquitted. He always maintained his innocence until he died in 1998. In what was possibly Crane's last interview the second week of June, he was asked if life was hard after Hogan's Heroes ended. Uh, I love life. I'm an optimist. I'm the guy that always assumes no matter what's in that room, there's a pony hidden underneath all of that stuff. Less than two weeks later on June 29th, Crane was murdered right before his 50th birthday. So with everything that we know so far, what's your opinion on the case? Uh, I think John Carpenter was guilty, but it kind of reminds me of uh, D.B. Cooper and the FBI where the evidence was messed up so bad, they know who did it, but they can never convict the person. Yeah. I know they let the family come in yeah. and remove stuff right. to try to be nice and they act different because is somebody famous. Right. A lot different than it is today. Right. Right. You didn't know some of that stuff and they bowed to pressure back then. Yeah. And it, it's not something, Scottsdale was a small town, western town, mm -hmm. and uh, not something that they were real experienced no, at. Not really equipped to handle. Right. What happened to Bob Crane was just such a tragedy. We're nearing the 45th anniversary of his death and it seems now that the truth about his murder may never be solved. Uh...